The quantum phase estimation algorithm allows us to find the eigenvalue of an eigenvector given the matrix. So if we have a matrix U and apply it to its eigenvector V, since V is an eigenvector, we get e to the i theta V, where e to the i theta is the eigenvalue. We can represent all eigenvalues in quantum computing in this form. The QPE, or quantum phase estimation algorithm, finds e to the i theta to a certain accuracy. This algorithm is a key part in many quantum algorithms, including Shor's algorithm, which we will discuss in the next lesson, which allows us to find prime factors of large numbers. Here is the quantum phase estimation circuit. As you can see, we have two registers. The first one contains m zeros and is used to store the estimated phase, and the second one, v, is n qubits and is the eigenvector of the gate we are trying to measure the eigenvalue of. Looking at the circuit, you can see that the gate u, which we are trying to find the eigenvalue of, is to the power of some numbers. u to the power of n is the same as applying u to a qubit n times. Also, you can see we have the inverse quantum Fourier transform at the end of the algorithm. Let's start going through the circuit. At psi sub 0, we have the state m zeros v. Then at psi sub 1, we apply the Hadamard gates to all the qubits in the first register. At psi sub 2, we apply the U gate to the eigenvector v with the rightmost qubit in the first register as a control. Since v is the eigenvector of U, phase kickback occurs, which adds a relative phase of e to the i theta to the qubit. Then at size sub 3, we apply two u gates, or the u squared gate, with the qubit in the first register as the control and v as the target. Once again, phase kickback occurs, applying a phase of e to the i theta times e to the i theta, or e to the 2 i theta. We continue this process for each of the qubits in the first register, which leaves us with this state. Now, we let theta equal 2 pi j where j is a number between 0 and 1, since theta is an angle between 0 and 2 pi. With this, if we find j, we can find theta. Substituting this in, we get this equation. Now, since j is a bit string less than 1, we can represent it like this, which converts it from a decimal in binary to a decimal in base 10. If we now sub that into our equation, it becomes this. Now if we look at the first qubit, we have a factor of 2 to the power of m minus 1. If we distribute that into j, we get this. Since all these terms are integers, when we expand them out, there will be a factor of 2 pi. So they are not needed, since they are redundant. This leaves us with j m minus 1 over 2. If we do the same process to the rest of the qubits, we are left with this state. Can you notice anything about this state? This is the same state as if we were to apply the quantum Fourier transform to the state j. So, when we apply the inverse quantum Fourier transform, we end up with the state j. All we need to do is measure the state and we've approximated j to m bits. Now, with j, we can multiply it by 2 pi to get theta and then we can find the eigenvalue as e to the i theta.